Germany has a lot to be proud of when it comes to their contributions to global sanitation and hygiene. The story begins when the first global development agenda, the Millennium Development Goals, or MDGs, were defined. Dr. Konjukiewicz, the former Deputy Director General at the German Federal Ministry of Economic Cooperation and Development, was the head of the Infrastructure Division at the time. When the MDG were defined in the 1990s, a target for water was included, but sanitation was not yet a priority. This needed a correction. The opportunity arose with the Bonn Freshwater Conference in 2001, which I had organized together with my wonderful colleagues Dagmara Baerbalk and Fritz Holzwart from the German Environment Ministry. We worked to forge an alliance of like-minded countries to put sanitation on the global agenda. Together, we actively pushed the international community in 2002 at the World Summit on Sustainable Development in Johannesburg to adopt a global target for access to sanitation. This was extremely important. In line with this political initiative, the German government made the additional funds available to scale up ecological sanitation in developing countries. A success story unfolded, and while much remains to be done, I am proud that I was part of that story. At the international political level, Germany played an extremely important role via Dr. Uschi Eid. As a former parliamentary state secretary at BMZ, she was nominated by the UN Secretary General Kofi Annan to be part of his high-level United Nations Secretary General Advisory Board on Water and Sanitation. Yeah, in 2006, as uh, the chair of the Sanitation Working Group of UNSCAP, I was totally alarmed to see the failing progress in reaching the sanitation target. So um, it was clear that uh, a taboo was surrounding that topic. We needed a political momentum yeah, to break that taboo. Uh, so we came up with the idea to suggest at the World Water Forum in 2006 in Mexico City to have an international year on sanitation. And I was really thrilled to, uh, to see that the UN General Assembly decided to have the year 2008 as the year on sanitation. Um, I was very happy to see that uh, the German civil society, especially the German toilet organization, played a central part in, in during that year because they had created an exhibition called Sanitation is Dignity and UN Water uh, officially supported this campaign and used it during the whole year which was a very big success because it, it attracted a lot of media attention. Where would you hide if you had no toilet was the question that these figures posed in famous public locations in more than 50 cities across the world, from New York to Nairobi, to get the point across that sanitation is indeed dignity. During the same year, German stakeholders also made one other very important contribution that still lasts today the founding of the Sustainable Sanitation Alliance. Dr. Anna Panaza is the head of the Secretariat today. When the International Year of Sanitation came, we were worried that more toilets with no treatment attached may pollute village lakes, for example, and in turn would lead to more and not less dying children. So we had to do something. Together with a group of international partners, the Sustainable Sanitation Alliance, lovingly called Susanna, was created to make an emphasis of the sustainability of toilets. We were happy to host the Secretariat at GIZ with financial support from the German Ministry for Development Cooperation, BMZ. Susanna defined for the sector what sustainable sanitation is, taking health as well as environment, cultural and institutional aspects into account. And the Alliance created a movement for sustainable sanitation, highlighting the many positive implications that sanitation can have on a range of development issues. Today, Susanna has grown to a vibrant network with more than 380 partners and more than 14,000 users of the discussion forum, the library, and other Susanna tools. And it's a central place for expert exchange and a sounding board for the sector. The German Federal Foreign Office made another key contribution to the topic. 
Katerina de Albuquerque, the first special rapporteur for the human rights on water and sanitation, remembers. Without <laughs> Germany's support, um, since I would say before 2005, um, for bringing the issue of the human rights to water and sanitation to the forefront of discussions of the Commission on Human Rights, of the Human Rights Council, the mandates that I held as the first UN independent expert on water and sanitation, as the first UN special rapporteur on the human rights to water and sanitation, this would not have materialized full stop. And without these mandates, we would never have been where we are right now. Meaning, uh, after my appointment in 2008, we managed, with the support of so many civil society organizations, but under the German and also Spanish leadership, um, uh, too, uh, to see the human rights to water and sanitation explicitly recognized in 2010. And of course, this recognition, this explicit recognition of the rights in 2010 that led then to um, the negotiation, to major, to a major influence in the negotiations of Agenda 2030, the Sustainable Development Goals, which not only have a dedicated explicit goal on water and sanitation, but they also refer explicitly to the human rights to water and sanitation. It's the only rights besides gender equality that are explicitly mentioned in the 2030 Agenda. And what happened on the development side of things? In 2015, the Millennium Development Goals gave way to the Sustainable Development Goals. And of course, Germany played an important role in this process also. Thomas Stratenwert is the head of the division that was responsible within the Federal Ministry of Environment. The German government was a strong advocate for a dedicated water and sanitation goal and for integrating water aspects into other goals in line with our water energy food nexus approach. We are also very happy to have succeeded in designing SDG 6 more inclusively by integrating targets on aspects closely linked to sanitation, such as reduction of pollution, wastewater treatment, efficient use and reuse, and the protection of water dependent ecosystems. We are also one of the driving forces for more ambitious targets, including safely managed sanitation and an increased focus on hygiene. But the challenges remained huge and better collaboration was needed. In 2011, German civil society created the German WASH network. Today, we unite 29 NGOs working in the field of humanitarian and development WASH. Roland Hansen of Malteser International remembers the day well as he was there as a founding member. The German Bosch Network not only aligned and improved the contribution of German NGOs, it also enabled a better collaboration between the German government and civil society. We exchange knowledge to improve the quality of our own WASH interventions. We bring attention to the topic in society and our parliament. We have been able to spearhead several international policy debates, and we do our best to work with our government to commit to WASH. A perfect example of this took place in 2013. Together with the German WASH network, the Federal Foreign Office took another serious commitment. Dr. Elke Aderholt was leading the relevant division at the time. In 2013, we were looking for another area of focus for German humanitarian assistance. The German WASH network was so well organized, connected to relevant global actors, and had so much implementation expertise that it was easy for us to decide on WASH as key area of focus. We actually worked together with the German WASH network to define our WASH humanitarian strategy, which I'm proud to say served as a model within our system and for other countries. On the human rights front, Germany continued to support the special rapporteur. In 2015, the one human right to water and sanitation became two separate rights, finally giving it the attention it deserves and another important step in breaking the taboo. At the same time, others were discovering there's an even bigger taboo. Ina Yorga of WASH United will tell us about it. 
Today, millions of women and girls are stigmatized, discriminated and excluded against simply because they menstruate. We saw the huge success the World Toilet Day had in breaking the taboos around sanitation, and we thought if this is possible for menstruation too. In 2014, we established the International Menstrual Hygiene Day on 28 May, with 28 representing the average length of the menstrual cycle and five days the average length of the bleed. The day helps to raise awareness, break the silence and advocate for policy change. In 2022, we had a record-breaking reach of 687 million people through online and social media. Wear the menstruation bracelet to start the conversation around menstruation. I'm committed. And I think we've seen that Germany has been a huge champion for sanitation and hygiene in the past two decades. But I think at the same time, we're all aware that we will not reach the goals at current progress in 2030. We must do more.